we met a very interesting person over here, Dr. Nandita Anantaraman. There was something common which connected us, which is calligraphy. And she is a medical doctor, but she has medical challenges. Yeah. By March 2020, I could only um, sit for a few minutes and stand for a few minutes. I was mostly um, bedridden. She's also been doing some work for the American Calligraphy Society. Writing every day and using these fine motor movements in your hands is so good for your neurological system because calligraphy is for everyone. Hello, US. We are at the Chennai Pen Show 2024, the last day, and we met a very interesting person over here, Dr. Nandita Anantaraman. She likes to be called as Nan. Yes. <laughs> All right. And what was interesting is there was something common which connected us, which is calligraphy. In recent times, she has picked up writing in the Zenarian and the copper plate style of writing with the pointed nib and uh, well people who know that I too had forayed into calligraphy and done something in calligraphy the common ground being calligraphy but then moving away from it a little bit to talk about what is even more commoner is or what is even more interesting is people who have faced challenges in life stigmas in life have tried to overcome it with i mean overcome the whole thing with some kind of a outlet or some kind of a, you know hobby or a passion to express themselves maybe it was early in life or a little late in life i think recent times after the pandemic she picked up this art form i have seen she has got a very steady hand a natural ability that was there. This is a fine example of natural abilities surfacing a little late in life than early. So I was impressed with the way Nan wrote certain things in uh, copper plate as well as in capitals the way she wrote her letter, steady hand, straight lines, all that is natural ability. And she is a medical doctor, yes. but she has medical challenges. Yes. Now, over to Nan to say a few words about herself, her medical challenges and what this practice of calligraphy did to her and is doing to her and how she is finding life more interesting after discovering this art form. Over to Nan. So, I'm Nan. I'm a doctor and a calligrapher and um, I've loved art since I was a child and I grew up in Dubai where we're surrounded by beautiful Arabic calligraphy, but growing up, I never knew this term or what calligraphy was about. And I was an avid painter and I used to love to draw. And calligraphy um, was something that interested me, but I didn't know what it was called. I thought it was typography. You know, I didn't know all these terms, script versus font and things like that. And pre-pandemic, when I was starting to fall ill, I took a brush calligraphy class and it opened up the whole world of calligraphy and pens and nibs and all and inks and all the exciting things to me. And um, after I did the brush calligraphy, I picked it up very fast and I was very good at it, but something was missing. And that's when I discovered the pointed pen and copper plate. And there was this whole beautiful world out there of other pointed pen scripts and broad edge scripts and so much to explore. All this while, I was getting progressively more and more fatigued. In the beginning, I started getting just more and more tired each day, needing more and more rest, more and more sleep. Um, by February 2020, I was seeing double in the evenings and I thought, oh, that's a bit odd. By March 2020, I could only um, sit for a few minutes or stand for a few minutes. Chewing food was difficult. I couldn't uh, lift a plate. My father had to come live with me to look after me because I couldn't take care of my basic needs at all. Um, it was a really difficult time and I was mostly um, bedridden. And to get me through this, I, I 
wanted to focus my attention somewhere. And I thought, oh, I can't paint in bed. I have to go wash my brushes. And maybe there's something creative I can do in bed. And I, I came back to calligraphy and I thought, yes, this is, this is what I'm going to do. And instead of letting myself um, be taken over by illness and negative emotions and doubt, I'm going to focus all my energy here. And this helped me in a multitude of ways. Not only did it um, help me to distract my mind from the realities that were going on, but it also was very meditative and very therapeutic. It um, helped me you know, uh, to be calm and uh, care for myself through art. And it made a huge world of difference. And today I've come so far from that day. I have um, embraced calligraphy. It has helped my health improve so much. I am back on my feet for the most part. Yes, I have bad days, but everything is, is so much better. And I couldn't have gone through this very difficult time if it wasn't for the joy of calligraphy. Good. So have you... Heard it all from the horse's mouth, how therapeutic it has been and people with challenges, neurological challenges can also do precision work. That is one of the articles that was written a few years ago about me that you know even people with epilepsy can do precision work. Yes. So it helps in focusing getting away from the negatives of the stigma and the society which tries to put you down, you try to do something creative and effective and you showcase it to the world. And as the old adage goes, there's no business like show business. <laughs> the moment you give a visual appeal, then people are getting distracted, diverted. They don't look at the negatives and they go after the positives and say, wow. Now that wow effect I have experienced for almost 50 plus years on this planet. She has experienced for the last few years. So the message that we want to give very clearly to the general public is even if you have challenges and even if you are facing stigmas in the society, it can vary from society to society, country to country. Focus on your own self, your innate abilities. It could be anything, any kind of an art form or a skill. Bring it out and showcase it. Enjoy the process and you will find that it distracts you. It takes you away from pain if you have something and it lets you to focus better on your life and then enjoy each day to make it more meaningful and useful. I hope this short discussion between Nan and myself motivates and inspires a lot of people maybe with epilepsy or with Down syndrome or with any of these challenges that people have been having. To say, do not say that, look, I have this problem, I can't do this, I can't do that. But then to think of what can I do in spite of all this yes. and lead a normal life. So the message for the normal people is also, you can do much better than us. If we can do, you can do much better. That's a very clear message. And calligraphy has been the outlet for both of us. Maybe it's like uh, I came by the sailboats of the Esther years and she arrived by the jet planes of the modern times. That's the only difference. But the art form remains the same, which has given great pleasure, concentration, and she's also been doing some work for the American Calligraphy Society. Yes, so and, I uh, work for the Society for Calligraphy in California, in and I'm a volunteer there, and I help organize calligraphy workshops inspiring people all over the world to pick up a pen or a brush and write. In this digital world, when a younger person says, pick up the pen and brush and write, the message is loud and clear to all the youngsters out there. Her age or younger than her, pick up the pen and brush, start writing. It will improve your memory, your vocabulary and your power of expression, which is the most important thing. You need to really express yourself well and it's communication which makes a world of difference in all kinds of relationships in this world. So that's reinforced by her personal experience. This is what we also wanted to tell everybody.
Anything else you wanted to add? I just wanted to say that as a doctor, um, writing every day and using these fine motor movements in your hands is so good for your neurological system and especially with people who are aging as well. It's not just for young people. Calligraphy is for everyone. And it will help you as you age as well just to practice these small movements and do these exercises. You know, that reminds me, when I taught in Oxford in 2001, I had addressed a group of older people, above 60, to practice this art form of calligraphy and the basics. There are a lot of older people who need to get into writing. In fact, I've had a few patients who had developed Parkinson's and what they were recommended was to write to get over that you yes. know, tremor in the hands. So it has many different therapeutic effects. And like all over the world, people have all asked me a question whenever I've addressed schools, colleges or social gatherings or rotary. They all take a dig at the doctor. You know the doctor's handwriting. And here is a doctor. If you've got your uh, handwriting, you can show that, whatever I, you've written, I, I've only how got the doctor writes. It's not that doctors are given special training in medical schools to scribble. It's just that, you know, overwhelming syllabus and the long nomenclatures and shorter time makes them write faster and scribble. But doc, I know many doctors who write beautifully and I have also asked them, what do your patients say when they look at your handwriting? There have been two kinds of responses. One is, somebody asked them, Doctor, are you really an MBBS? Because your handwriting does not say that you are an MBBS. So I have a doubt. So it was quite skeptical. But then the other side is, the patient comes around and says, Doctor, I can read exactly what medicine you have prescribed. I'm so happy. I'm so happy to meet you and know what is being prescribed. So two sides of the coin explode. And you've seen the doctor's handwriting, how she writes. Would you like to get prescriptions like that? Please pick that up. How many of you would like to get your prescriptions written out like this in copper plate? Lovely, isn't it? So doctors actually don't get a scribbling practice and it is not a habit of doctors to write badly and some secret that is held between the doctor and the chemist or the pharmacist for a formulation. It's just that it happened. Let it go and stop blaming doctors. What do you say, Nan? I think that we can all write a little bit better. Yes, certainly. And Americans write in all capitals, which is also dangerous. Don't write in all capitals because when you bring all capitals together, it becomes an optical illusion. When you write in caps and lowercase, you have the variation of sizes and the clarity to read it. Right? Yes. Good. So, is there anything else that you want to add on to? I'm just very happy to be here with you today. Thank you. And I hope that more people will be inspired to write. Excellent. So that's the message. Be inspired, be motivated and pick up the pen and start writing. All the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.